Welcome to Harmonium LA, the podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Heady Gandolfi, emotional wellness expert, founder of Harmonium LA, and published author. The world needs healing now more than ever. My goal is to bring you inspiring conversations, tips, and techniques that will help you build a sustainable healing toolkit. The Harmonium LA podcast is the only resource you will need to slow down, stop searching, and start healing. Welcome back to another episode of Stop Searching, Start Healing. My guest today is an absolutely phenomenal woman, and I'm sure even if you haven't heard of her, you absolutely would have heard of her skincare line, her product, her business. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure most of you have probably at some point even used the products yourself. She is the founder of Dermalogica and the International Dermal Institute. She is an absolutely incredibly inspiring woman. She has had her own journey of healing and business and entrepreneurship. And she really is probably one of the most highly regarded and well-respected women in business today. She has been my unofficial mentor for the last 25, 30 years. I actually worked for Dermalogica for the IDI, the International Dermal Institute, back when I was, well, long ago um, and working for Jane's company, working for that industry in that environment really set me up with tools unbeknownst to me that would really help propel me forward in my life. I'm really excited that she has taken time out to talk to us today about her journey, but also about her book, Skin in the Game. Everything that you need is already inside you because I truly believe that that translates not just from business and from life, but also into our healing as well. So without any further ado, please join me in welcoming Jane to today's show. Jane, thank you so much for joining us. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you here joining us on the show today to talk specifically, not only just about your journey and your life, your business, but also about your book, because this you. <laughs> truly a gift. And I think it absolutely couldn't have come at a more appropriate time. I really don't. I think with everything that's happened in the world, everything that is going on that has been ongoing for the last couple of years, people really need something to hold on to they need tools they really need inspiration and they need hope more than anything else and I think that your book is really exactly that it's not just a book about business I think a lot of people think oh it's probably just about business and entrepreneurship about your journey as an entrepreneur but it really to me when I read it it's it's about so much more than that it's a book about life it's about relationships it's about parenting overcoming adversity and challenges, obviously business. Um, and I have to tell you, it made me laugh. It made me cry. It made <laughs> me write and journal and really stop and ponder and think about what's important. For me, I, I truly am trying to look at COVID as a gift and the pandemic mm. as a gift. And I know to a lot of people that might sound a little bit bizarre, but honestly, I think the one thing that it has gifted us is time. And that's mm. something which is so precious. It's such a, a precious commodity. And it's something that obviously once it's spent, you can't take it back. But it's given mm. us time to reflect. It's given us time to really stop and think about what is important. And I know myself with my clients and in my work, a lot of people are really at a crossroads right now. And, you know, they're saying, oh, I'm so excited to get back to normal. But I know you say there is no normal. What's normal anymore? It doesn't exist. So, mm. I mean, you, by your own admission, you are a self-proclaimed optimist. Um, mm. Do you see the pandemic and COVID as a gift? And if so, in your own life, how has that shown up? Mm, it's a really great question. Thank you, Jessica, and thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's been an, an enormous two year, two years so far experiment, hasn't it? You know, we've, I think we've so many things that we've had to wrestle with, whether it's been homeschooling, whether it has been working from home, whether it has been been in isolation, being cut off from our from our social interactions, all of that. I think many of us had discussed perhaps for years what would that be like or what could that actually work and and what if you were the only one working from home and everyone else is in the office this past two years for me the gift has been the experiment of seeing what happens when we completely change 
what we do for a lengthy period of time, not two weeks, not like a vacation, not two months, but two years and counting globally. It's, I think it's the first time, at least in living history, that we've really had that happen. Mm. And so I, I see all the pain that we've gone through during COVID, all the loss, dreadful amounts of loss and challenge and also people rising to the challenge and people moving through the pain and people really having to self-evaluate what is important not just to me but what is important to me being here Mm. you know there's something also called the guilt of the survivor which is when you come through something and we're not physically harmed by it perhaps but emotionally you 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 feel the pain of 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 everyone else there is a certain amount of well how how come I am okay well why why me and I think that is always can always be a gift because then we have to start saying well then not just what what's the best thing for me but why am I here what's my bigger Mm -hmm. why you know, it's kind of like the age old question, what is the meaning of life? But more specifically, what is the meaning of my life? And so I call this, it's not the new normal, it's actually the new abnormal, but I call it the the new next. Mm. And I think we've had a planetary reset, like you hit that reset button or reboot your computer, where you suddenly have to say, hang on a minute, wait, things Things are going awry. Things are heading in a direction that I feel are out of control. I I want to really think, what do I want? Do I want to go back to what I was doing before? Do I want to continue as I am now? What have I truly missed? Some people have said, I never realized my family was so important. I never realized my friends were so important. I never realized I missed traveling and and seeing new adventures. I never realized that before. Other people say, I loved being at home. I never realized how how much I missed being at home with alone time and time to think and perhaps people started a a new practice of meditation or gratitude journaling or whatever it might be I think every single one of us has gone through a major shift and now just as you said Jessica we're saying okay so wait a minute now it seems to all be moving forward in another direction wait a minute before this happens I have to really solidify what it is my next move is going to be and why And I didn't realize it when I started writing the book because I actually got my book contract signed in Jan with HarperCollins, who's the publisher, in January of 2020, pre-COVID. COVID COVID was just getting started, but we didn't know it then. We went into lockdown in California in March, March 16th um, of 2020. And my book deadline was September. And I thought, oh my goodness. Well, I thought the gift was, oh my goodness, I'm going to have this time to write. All my travel plans just went out the window. All my work commitments just sort of stopped. It all went virtual. I have time to write, which I did. And what I hadn't realized as I was writing the book, I was really writing a book about how do you reset your life? How do you reset your relationships? How do you reset your parenting style? How do you, when you get to a point in your life that you say, you know what, this is not working for me. This is not, this is not the best, biggest, healthiest I could be. How do you actually reset? And so really the book is about how I, through my life, have reset relationships, where I lived, uh, my work, what I did, uh, pretty much everything and provided the kind of tools of how I did it in case those could be useful to others. And uh, the things that helped me, the things that were cringeworthy that, you know, I, <laughs> but were important. And then when, when we came through and we published in October of 2021, I realized the book was written for exactly this time, this moment. And I feel so grateful for the gift of that, of that timing that I hadn't realized the book I was ultimately going to write and the time I wrote it was actually going to be the perfect time for me to write it and, and hopefully for people to receive it. And uh, so I'm, that's the gift I, I received was the time to write it and the fact that I really feel very proud of uh, of the timing and I hope it will be helpful. Oh, 
Absolutely. And it, and it really is. I mean, the timing could not be more perfect. And, you. you know, and, and it, it is a beautiful story, like you say, because you were writing, but not realizing exactly perhaps what the why was the bigger why at the time until you looked back on it and you saw that. But, you know, you do share your story and all the challenges that you faced in your year, early years very transparently in the book, you know, and you talk a lot about one of the things that you really talk about is how you used magic and play and creation and visualization um, as an escape from the pain that you suffered losing your father when you were just two years old. Um, you know, so at age four and a half, you were using these tools, unbeknownst to you, I suppose, at that time, that they were tools of escapist behavior from that pain. But how do you think that that then played into the bigger picture of your life of building this global skincare empire and proudly being given the title as the woman who started a cult <laughs> by the Sunday Times? <laughs> I love that. My best headline ever, as I say in the book, my favorite. Um, my UK team, actually, this, this past November, when I went there to do the book launch there, they presented me with a white T-shirt and, and they had embroidered on it the woman who started a oh, cult, which it. I don't think I'm ever going to wear. I think I'm going to shadow box it and actually put it up. <laughs> But anyway, that was that was a huge that was a great gift. So, um, yes, everything we live through uh, uh, prepares us for what we're about to go through. I, I just I've learned to trust that it's not some kind of thing that kind of came to me. I've learned to trust that because I've seen that played out in my life. So, as you said, my father died suddenly when I was uh, just a month short of my third birthday. And my mother was left at age 38 to re raise four girls on her own. I'm the youngest of four. And um, she did it because she, she managed to do it because she was a qualified nurse. And even though she hadn't worked since she was married, which had been many years, she went back to work. She fell back on her training. And so she instilled in us this idea of learning how to do something to always be able to have a skill set in your hands that you could provide for your family, which of course was my North Star through my whole career. And I went into training as a skin therapist, did an apprenticeship, became an instructor. And my life's career really has been about teaching others to have a skill that can support them mm. and products that can also lead to revenue and lead to outcomes for your client skin that will keep them coming back and keep you supported. So that's been the core why for me all the way through my career. And I think that, you know, when I was, I was coming home from school, we lived in Scotland. I was, you start school in Scotland at four and a half. So it's a little bit younger than in the England, which is usually five or five and a half. So my elder sisters were all, my, my next sister up is seven years older than me. So they were all quite a bit older than me and they were in middle and high school. So I used to walk myself to school in the morning. I mean, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? But I did, I walked myself to school and walked myself home. My mum had to go to work. She worked seven in the, in the evening till seven in the morning. And in the morning, she, you know, would get me ready and then, um, you know, she'd go to sleep when I was at school and, uh, and then get up. Or sometimes when once I started school, she would start doing day shifts. It's was seven in the morning till seven in the evening. So she would be home overnight. So that patchwork quilt of care uh, turned out that I was coming home in the afternoons and I was on my own for about an hour or so before my sisters got home. And I went to school with my, the back door key around my neck and hid it. It was my secret with my mom. She told me, never tell anybody that you have this, because I think, you know, because someone would have called child <laughs> services. For so when I got home, I, I, I had the, I saw it as a magical hour. I could play dress up. I could run around the house. I would take one of my sister's, you know, slips, half slips, waist waist petticoats and put it on my head and like put the elastic around the top of my head and then the, the 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 slip hung down my back and I had long hair and I would you know run down the stairs like Rapunzel and then <laughs> at some point you know we went to see the sound of music and I must have been about five and and then I was you know one of the Von Trapp family children <laughs> running away from Maria I mean there was no end mm. to my imagination and I've always looked back on that as a magical childhood. And now I'm an adult and I've gone through and have a little bit more perspective. I realize that distraction was also distracting me from the fact that I was all alone in a big house and not to be scared. Mm. So of course, there's always that 
you can always tell a story in a dark way or you can tell it in a light way. I've always chosen to look at the light side. There is always one, even no matter how hard it is. There's always that little spot of light, like a yin yang symbol. There's always a spot of light in the dark and a spot of dark in the light. And so um, I, I really learned to trust. My imagination can see me through. My thought process can take me to a place where I can visualize something as if it's happening. And um, I think it made me articulate in that way. And that really informed a lot of my career. I felt very easily able to connect to my clients. I, I became feral. I could spot someone who was lonely. I could spot someone who maybe didn't have a lot of money. We had no extra money. I could spot someone that was trying to be brave. I'd seen all that. I'd been all that. Mm. And and I also then learned as I as I started becoming an entrepreneur, I truly believe in the power of visualization. I think if you can see something as if it's completely finished, completely finished, um, you can you can live in that. I think it's interesting because we're now talking about artificial intelligence and you know how do we capture artificial intelligence? Like we're all using chatbots when you know we might think we're talking to an expert on a chatbot. Right you know, asking about where's my order, but it's actually, you know, artificial intelligence. And we're only just at the start of that. But I think, my goodness, that's almost like the ultimate manifestation. We're going to live in the metaverse where you are literally living in a virtual world. And, and so I don't think anything's really new. I think it's always been around us and, and we're able to harness it when we, when we need to. Mm, just being able to tap into that inner knowing, yeah. that inner wisdom, that inner guide, because it's always yeah. there. But we just yeah, don't it's just an energy. That's right. It's like an energy. It's like a well. You know, you may have a well under your garden, but you don't know it until you tap down and find out if it's down there. I think if we tap down into it, you know, sometimes people say to me things like, you know, they genderize this and they say women are more intuitive. And I mm. say, you know what? I maybe, but I also think it's because for whatever reason, we've learned to trust it. Mm. I think we all have a gut feeling, but do you trust and will you? act on it that's mm. the thing do you trust it enough that you will literally form your action around what your gut feeling is telling you or do you say later ah I should have listened to I should have listened to my gut because that was right I didn't realize at the time listen to that that is you plumbing down into that energy that well that's always inside you Absolutely. That's, that's it. And we don't, we just don't trust it enough. But do you think that is what, because you listened to that and you trusted in that. And then you gained this title of the woman that started a cult. And that was because <laughs> I think you trusted your inner gut. You were like, no, I'm not going to be like everybody else. This is different. Yeah. This is why. Yeah, this is why, because when you, when you tap down into you know, what do I really love to do? And in the book, I have this chart of circles, concentric circles, which I have always used, which is you kind of join up. What do you love to do? What are you good at doing? What do people need in the world? And can you get paid for it? Because it's all very well to say, find your purpose. But for most people, that that you do every day and you do it for a significant number of hours needs to put food on the table and feed your family. So I'm not for one second saying, you know, you should not be working in a job or have, you know, working. The point is, is that job, that thing that you're doing, that career, that work, does it tie into something that speaks to your heart? And so I have the chart in the book, which is really simple. And, you know, I'd say to people, you know, just, just photograph it and carry it around on your phone. But if you can make those circles intertwine, in the middle of it all, you found your purpose, something you love doing, something you're good at doing, that people need you to do, and will pay for it. Now you're living your purpose in doing your work. So simple, but so so needed and so necessary. You yeah. know, and I find as well, like a lot of the time I have a lot of people, especially women, tell me that they just can't find the time to think about what their purpose is. They don't have the time to think about what they need to be doing. They're just busy doing and going through the motions. And yeah. that they sometimes feel guilty to even carve out a bit of time for self-care and for, for themselves, for healing. So mm. how important would you say self-care is? And has it played into the success of, of your business as an entrepreneur and as a business leader? And if so, what's yes. the, the one tool or the most impactful tool that you've used? 
Oh, that's so important. To, you know, it is it is like that cliche, you know, you, on the aeroplane, you put your own oxygen mask on first before you can put even your child's on. In other words, if you're not in a position to maintain your own health, you're not in a position to ever share with someone else how they could be healthy. I, I don't, don't see how you could do it. Uh, for me, and it's different for every body, for, for me, I know that what's important is I, I need alone time. I, I need to carve that out. It, it doesn't matter. You know, there were times when my children were little and I was working full time, flat out, building the company. Sometimes that alone time was just being in the toilet, <laughs> closing the door. I mean, honestly, closing the door. I remember vividly saying to Molly when, when they were about a, a year and a half, maybe 18 months, I said, Molly, mommy's just going to the toilet. I'm going to close the door. I'm just behind the door. And I remember going in the toilet and closing the door. And she was right outside. And these little fingers came under the door. And I said, I just sat there. And I just, I went, not to, honestly, I wasn't going to the toilet. I was just sitting on the toilet. And I looked at these little fingers and I thought, oh, my goodness, I just need a few minutes. Sometimes it's just a few minutes. Sometimes you're walking down the stairs carrying a load of laundry and you just pause halfway down and say, take a breath, take another, center, and go. Okay, so that, that's when you're snatching time. Even that will help. Mm. Now I'm in a position in my life and in my career that I can actually make time almost. You know, car, I can choose time. That's the greatest gift of everything, I, I think, as well as health. And so to me, what that looks like is I think, 10 minutes of self-awareness every day. Now, people could call it meditation. You may call it prayer. However you define that moment, you could go for a walk. You could um, just, you know, be in, be in the shower. I mean, whatever speaks to you. 10 minutes where really all you're doing is, is just being present and kind of absorbing what's happening and feeling the, the, the temperature in the room and feeling the wind or lack of wind on you and, and just sort of centering your brain. And I give some exercises of how I do that in the book. And that's always important to me. I need my alone time. I also need to be physically as well as I can be, to be strong enough mentally and physically to do what I want to do. So for me, that looks like um, pretty much a plant-based diet it's not for everybody I know that I'm just saying for me that works I know that if I have too much caffeine it's not great for me I know that if I have too much alcohol that's not great for me um, but I think everything you know in moderation I also my form of movement is pilates I love it I'm going to a class this afternoon I, I do a pilates class at least five times a week I do it with a group in a group class because I like a group setting. I've learned I don't like one-on-one -on -one or privates. I like a group setting. You figure out what you like to do. Mm -hmm. Some people do a walking group, some people do a lone walk, whatever it is. I need to do that. And, you know, trying to get sleep and trying to stay, you know, in, in that focus. And I've come to, to that, that works for me. You mm -hmm. Find out whatever works for you and, and try and, and reset yourself back there as much as you can. Yeah. I think it's important because otherwise without our health and without our mental, when I say health, I mean physical and mental, yeah. without our physical and mental health, it, I don't understand how it's possible to live our biggest life. And I'm not saying you have to be in perfect health your whole life. I don't know that that's possible for any of us, but it's your optimum health at that moment of your life, your best that you can be then. Mm. Absolutely. Finding the balance, because when you're being yeah. pulled in all these different directions, whether it is as a business leader, an entrepreneur, or just being a mom at home, yeah. then you just have to have that. You really do. Yeah. yeah. And um, remember, and I say this in the book, as you know, it's not even about balance. It's about resilience. All of those habits help you build your resilience. And in having that resilience, you are then able to balance out. Okay, you know what? That's not as important as I thought. You know what? I'm gonna, I can do that tomorrow. You know what? I can, if I have to pick up fast food tonight for takeout, it's okay. No one's, you know, everyone will survive it. Mm. In order to have that ability to balance out anything, let's call it that, you have to be, feel strong and resilient in yourself. Mm. So it really starts with resilience. And unless you have that, you just become overwhelmed with what is happening. Mm. 
Love that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the book, because I know when I wrote my children's book and I donated 100 percent of the proceeds to the orphanage, um, which was incredibly healing, incredibly healing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then when I started the practice, the healing practice, and I joined Santa Monica Chamber of Commerce, I connected with Marsha, who is the director of Found LA, which, of course, is your non profit and of course a hundred percent for everybody just so they know a hundred percent of the proceeds of the sale of your book skin in the game goes towards supporting uh found mm-hmm. so yeah. share with us about found because it's an amazing um non-profit that you put together you started in 2018 um to, up, to help support underserved local entrepreneurs and businesses so share with yeah. us about this. Great, thank you. And thanks for the opportunity to talk about it. Well, at Dermalogica, when we had Dermalogica, um, we had a nonprofit initiative there called FITE, F-I-T-E, which was financial independence through entrepreneurship. And we made a commitment at Dermalogica to fund 25,000 women into their own business within a two year period. We did, we started that in 2010. And I partnered with the Clinton Initiative and the UN, and that was really successful. Right now, we, we still do that program at Dermalogica. We funded over 115,000 women around the world to start or grow their business. I learned in my career in the salon industry that entrepreneurship is critically important in our industry. 98% of all salons are owned by women. And we put more women into their own business than any other. So pick up that thread of my mother's training, learn how to do something. My belief that if I educate people to upskill their their skills, they can support their families. That thread threaded through fight and it threaded into when we moved into into uh, through our acquisition of Dermalogica and I now play a role as a visionary for Dermalogica that's actually my title as chief visionary which I love (laughs) I like that as much as well yeah I love that so um when that happened I I Raymond and I my husband and my partner we said about putting together our own foundation which is is the Werwin Foundation and our initiative is found And what Found is all about is supporting small, invisible entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial businesses. I call us invisible entrepreneurs because these are the businesses people don't, sometimes don't see. I live in an area um, between Brentwood and Santa Monica in Los Angeles. And between my house and four blocks up the road where there's a Starbucks, I say to people, how many salons do you think are between like my house and the Starbucks? And most people can say, one because they think of the one on the corner there are nine there are nine salons between my house and Starbucks nail salons a massage studio three skincare centers they're not on the street they're upstairs they're behind the medical building they're around the back of the bank you know so these are our invisible entrepreneurs that are the glue of our community the bakery the, the small shoe mender, the florist, the dog groomer, the mechanic, all these small businesses that also employ 50% of the population. Most of us got our first job in a local business. I did. It was in a local hair salon when I was 13. So found is about finding those small businesses that may be somewhat invisible or taken for granted. And I'm happy to say that also one of the gifts of the last two years has been the whole shop local movement, which is perfect for our found entrepreneurs, because if we don't have our local communities shopping our local stores and businesses, we don't have a neighborhood or a community. And I, I, we all take advantage, I'm sure, of shopping online, but I personally don't want to live next to the Amazon shipping warehouse. I want to live next to the bakery down the road from me here called Merci that's owned by a lovely French woman who is a divine baker. I want to be able to go down to the local shoe repair place and take my shoes there. I want to go up the road to the local garage and and have them, you know, look at my tires. So shopping local is a huge movement and found is really all about that. And so Raymond and I decided we we know the the value of local entrepreneurs to a community. That is our industry, all thousands of small businesses, big entrepreneurs, small businesses, uh, built Dermalogica into a global brand. And we want to give back to that specific area. So you can go on to found, uh, foundla.org. And uh, it's a nonprofit, 501c3, and see the work we're doing. 
KCET just did a series of documentaries on television, profiling some of our, our entrepreneurs. Please go look at their stories, check them out, go to their businesses. It's also on our found.org website, foundla.org. You can also find resources for yourself as an entrepreneur, linking you to access to funding, access to education, and access to support of the community. And we really invite everyone, it's free, please go to foundla.org and uh, and check us out and uh, yes 100% of all the proceeds of my book are going into our nonprofit which is amazing and now more than ever because you know so many of us you know had this time to stop and think like we said way back in the beginning of the conversation you know and all of these local businesses that we see you know that closing because they haven't had the business it's time for us to support that and to bring that yes. back and to really you know because again it's something which is so healing and rewarding when you see that yes. you can shop local and do that and I know that you know when you actually did your book launch you held it at the local bookstore in Brentwood you had it at Diesel Bookstore because that's your yeah. local place and you didn't want to go to the big barns and noble and do all of the things you wanted it to be local and so yeah if people are local in LA go to these or buy this book there or <laughs> order it online from them um you know and just really help to, to give back because it's so important so just very quickly to to round up because I know you know obviously so much gold has come through from this conversation but with regard to healing um, and so for the people that are listening that might be struggling from COVID or just from life trauma generally, what advice would you give from your own journey of life and healing and knowledge and experience that you think would really maybe be able to, to help people that are struggling right now? One mm. Well, I have always believed there's something bigger than myself here. If there isn't, it doesn't really make much sense to me. I, I don't believe, well, here's the thing. I believe either everything is random or nothing is. It can't be sometimes random and sometimes not. So I take my cue from nature and I say, okay, so if spring comes after winter, which comes after autumn, which comes after summer, that is every single year. There's never really been a hiccup in that, at least not yet. We are, we know those seasons, it's not random. It's very specific. It, nature is not random. Tides come up, they go down. We understand how that works, but it's never random. We can predict what's gonna happen. I look at that and I say, well, therefore I believe nothing is random. And I must believe then that there's something bigger than myself here. now. What you name that is completely up to you. It depends what your belief system is. You may call it the universe, you may call it God, you may call it you know, your prana, your life, whatever you want to call it. For me, I believe strongly that that bigger element of energy in the world has the ability to help us because otherwise, why are we here? Mm. And therefore I really for healing, I try to tap into that deeply, that that is inside me somewhere already, a piece of it, because I can connect to that piece, but through that connect to the world. And, and simple exercises, like when I breathe in, I'm thinking I'm breathing in oxygen, which is healing and cleansing. I'm exhaling carbon dioxide, which I need to get out of my body. And every time I'm thinking of that circular, health of everything we do with our bodies from nutrition to exercise to to thinking to breathing to elimination uh all of that i just think i have to put my trust and my faith in this bigger thing that i can draw in and tap in somehow i don't have to understand how it works to know that it works I don't know that I completely understand how tides work. I know it's to do with the moon and waxing and waning. I'm not sure I completely understand it, <laughs> but I know it, it happens. So therefore I trust it. Mm -hmm. I don't understand exactly how my car engine works. I mean, I kind of know a little bit, but I couldn't take an engine apart and put it back together. I can still drive a car and trust it will get me there. Yeah. So I don't have to understand everything in order for me to trust it. Mm -hmm. So for me, Healing is part of that discipline. I, I have to trust that somehow, for some crazy reason, um, it's all meant to be happening. Mm. Love that. Happening for us, not to us. Correct. Trusting, trusting that it will all work out. Yeah. And everything 
<laughs> that you need is already inside you and everything that you need to know is inside this book and so I, I can't stress enough how much I really truly want everybody to go and buy this for two reasons not just because it's such a phenomenal book full of tools and tips for life and healing but also because of the the gift behind it of going back into the business to helping these local entrepreneurs and supporting them and um, we'll put all the links into the show notes as always follow jane follow demologica follow found la go to their website support local and just read this book it's my one piece of advice and when you do make sure you have a couple of hours because once you start you will not want <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much jessica i really appreciate it and love your support and i'm so happy that we got to reconnect wonderful jane so grateful thank you so much take Pleasure. care take care bye bye thank you so much for joining me today i truly hope that you enjoyed the show and there is at least one thing that you can take away from today's episode that will help you build that sustainable healing toolkit it would mean the absolute world to me if you would subscribe to the show give it a five star review and share this or any of the other episodes with somebody that you feel could really benefit by listening I look forward to seeing you next time.